Manufacturing costs consist of two processes, machining and assembling. The machining department shapes, hones, and drills the raw materials, and then the assembly department assembles and packages the parts. So they're just building the wheels. Do you guys know that a wheel is not a wheel? How many of you had nice rollerblade wheels and then the junky ones? Can you tell the difference? Isn't it amazing? So in this case, they have all these manufacturing costs. They come in and get put into the work and process department, the machining of it. Then it goes over to the assembly of them, of the wheels, and moves on to finished goods. This is a little different than what we had in job costing, isn't it? Assigning manufacturing costs, accumulating the materials, labor, and overhead is the same as in job order costing in that they go right into raw materials inventory or go into labor factory incurred or they get debited to manufacturing overhead. So the way in which we account for direct materials, direct labor, and overhead is the same. Then assigning these manufacturing costs to the work in process in a process system is going to be different from what we did in the job order system. How do we do material costs? The process cost system requires fewer material requisition slips than in a job order cost system. They're used for processes and not specifically for a job unique here and there. Requisitions are for big numbers, and the journal entry we would use to record these, so much as materials might go directly into the machining, and so many might go directly into just the assembly, okay? Large volumes, fewer items that are unique, they just get put right in there. So it's going to come out of raw materials, go into one of the various uh, processes, okay? Make sense? Factory labor, same thing. The time tickets you get used in either, either job system or process systems, but then the labor costs are going to be put into a specific department. They're going to either be, you're either working in machining or you're working in the assembly, right? They don't split them, they decide who's working in what area. Same with manufacturing overhead costs. We're going to determine that predetermined rate by assigning a driver, kind of like what we did in job cost systems, how we took a driver and then let's say there were more machine hours than labor hours, we would use machine hours to assign that overhead. Do you guys know what I'm talking about? So in the same respect, we're going to find some type of <coughs> predetermined rate that will go into either the assembly or the machining and then credit our manufacturing overhead, so we're still using some type of predetermined rate, but it's going to go into each one of those um, machining departments or assembly process. Um, then, once one department is completed with the work, it's going to get moved to another department, and then to another department. So it's going to continue to go into work and process from maybe department A to department B to department C until it's finished up. Make sense, guys? Yes? In making the journal entry to assign raw material costs, which, oh, you know the answer, huh? The debit is often two or more work and process accounts. So basically, it's going to be two or more process accounts because for this system to um, complete itself, it's going to go from one um, event to another to another, okay? Um, who wants to read this? Can you guys, who? Okay, how about Sam? Oh, Blue Diamond Company manufactures Z-Ball through two processes, blending and bottling. The June drop materials used were blended with 18,000 and bottling with 4,000. Factory labor costs were blending, were blending with 12,000 and bottling with 5,000. Manufacturing overhead costs were blending 6,000 and bottling 2,500. The company transfers units completed at a cost of 19,000 and the blending department to the bottling department. 
the department transfers units completed at a cost of 11,000 for each road. Colonel has assigned you all these costs for two processes and the transfer of units to the Thank you. So let's do this. How do we determine all this? To, to create the journal entries to assign those, process, you know, those costs to those processes, recording the materials used, we're going to take that, um, those materials that went direct into blending, to um, work in process blending, and then those materials that were used just for bottling get put into bottling, and we're crediting raw materials. Okay? <coughs> Because we're, we're putting the materials into that specific process involved. <coughs> Same with labor. <coughs> that, um, those hours assigned to blending get put into blending. Those with bottling are going to get assigned straight to bottling, and we're crediting our factory labor again. What are we going to do with overhead, though? The, the manufacturing overhead. We're going to assign directly to blending that allocation, directly to bottling that allocation, and we're crediting the manufacturing overhead. So instead of applying it to a job based on a specific category, we're applying them directly to that department or that process, okay? Now, how do we transfer the units? How do we take the units out of the one process and put them into bottling? We credit, or we debit our bottling, and we're crediting our work in process blending. Once the blending is done, we remove it from blending, debit it into bottling. Okay? It's all assets, it's all an inventory account, it's going through a system, a flow. And then once they're done, we're going to take it out of bottling and put it into finished goods. Okay? So here's an example. Suppose you have a work study job in the office of your college presidents, and she asks you to compute the cost of instruction per full-time equivalent student at your college. The college's vice president for finance provides the following information. Costs, total costs, nine million. Full-time students are 900. Part-time students are a thousand. So we got some full-time, we got some part-time. Part-time students take 60% of the classes of a full-time student. So to compute the number of full-time equivalent students, you would determine full-time students are at 900. But then if our thousand students are part-time, and, and we know it's a little more complicated than this because part-time students can take one class or they can take two classes, you know, three. But if we estimate that the equivalent is 60% of a full-time student, then we would take our category and show that our full-time equivalent is 1,500. Does that make sense? So cost of instruction per full-time equivalent student is going to be categorized based on coming up with a certain parameter or um, denominator to determine um, how we calculate per full-time equivalent of 6,000 per student. Make sense? Now, you can use different methods of determining an equivalent. The weighted average method is one where you consider degrees of completion of units completed and you basically come out with some equivalent method in determining it. So this is the most commonly used. We'll go through an example. The output of Corey's company packaging department during the period consists of 10,000 units completed and transferred out and 5,000 units in ending work in process that are only 70% complete. How are we going to calculate these equivalent units? So 10,000 units got completed, but 5,000 units are 70% complete, so we're going to calculate 3,500 there, which means our weighted average method 
would be 13,500 completed units. Make sense? So let's make it a little more refined. Kellogg Company has produced Eggo waffles. Let go my Eggo. We ate those so much as a kid, I hate them now. Three departments produce these waffles. Mixing, baking, freezing, and packaging. The mixing department combines the ingredients and then they, they take the dry ingredients, they mix them with the liquid ingredients, and they make the batter. So in the mixing department, we've got here, it started with 100,000 units. <clears throat> we started into production 800,000 units. We transferred out 700,000 units and still sitting in the department as of June 30th, we've got percentage complete, 100% of our materials, but our conversion costs down here are at 60% complete. So we have to come up with and calculate this based on big batches, okay? So units transferred out, if we transferred out 700,000 of materials and our conversion costs, but still on hand, you see how it tells us 200,000 at full 100% materials and the conversion cost, it's 200,000 at 60% complete. Show us what our conversion costs are and our materials are. Um, so let's look at a question here. And I, sometimes we'll take a break here and do a problem. Sometimes that's the best way to do it. The mixing department's output during the period consists of 20,000 units completed and transferred out and 5,000 units in ending work and process, 60% completed to materials and conversion costs. Beginning inventory is 1,000 units, 40% complete, as to materials and conversion cost. What are the equivalent units of production? Let's figure, well, how can we figure this out? The mixing department output 20,000 units completed and transferred out, and 5,000 units in the ending work and process, 60% complete as to materials and conversion costs. So 5,000 units, 60% complete is 3,000, and our 20,000 units would give us our 23,000. So we don't think about the last sentence? I'm sorry? Leave out the last sentence. The equivalent units of production. Okay, so our beginning inventory is 1,000 units, 40% complete. So that's what we start with as to materials and conversion costs. The mixing department's output during the period consists of 20,000 units complete and transferred out. So they're basically telling us, if I'm seeing it correctly here, um, the, we're starting the period with um, 1,000 units, 40% complete, which means we're at roughly an equivalent of 400, okay? Then, but that's not gonna, they're giving us this information, but the 20,000 units completed and transferred out, we, what we're needing to figure out is what percent of our ending um, process is completed, 5,000 at 60% complete would equal how much, guys? That's the 3,000 there, so the 23. Let's do a problem, guys. How about that? What's the first problem I have you guys set up to do? Can you help me? What? Let's figure this out. Oh, what is it? 
So the...